This time we're going to be looking at the gross anatomy of bone, the general morphology, so kind of those macro structures of bone, getting an idea of the landscapes and some of the key players that you can see with your eyes uh, unaided for the most part. And then we'll start kind of teasing into some of the smaller structures, which will be in the next and subsequent uh, lecture here. Okay, and I'm documented, so please feel free to uh, email me or leave me any comments or questions. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need to know about macro structures of bone are the divisions between compact bone and spongy bone. So compact bone, uh, also known as cortical, lamellar, or hard bone, uh, is shown here on this outside. Oop, well, yeah, laser pointer. There it is. Okay, this kind of really dark white striped part of the bone. Um, it's also shown here. Move the structure a little better. In this nice little cartoon, uh, it's representing all these little uh, dotted structures, which we'll take a look at later on. So some thick part of bone. Uh, spongy bone, however, on the other hand, also known as trabecular or cancellous bone, are all of these regions here, which uh, take on a little bit of a honeycomb pattern. Let's see, I think I have another. Oh, yep. Okay, an up close shot. Here we go. So as you can see here, it's open. Uh, this is like almost, uh, when these bones are dry, it's an arid matrix, okay, which is very different from this part of the bone here, this being the cortical bone, right, or that tough, hardened bone. So within those two larger divisions of bone, we have some of these smaller structures which we're going to go over also. Okay. Uh, firstly, let's just move this guy right here. We're going to talk about the periosteum. Osteum. And so it, as you can see here, it's kind of peeling away. It's this gray. It's, it's a covering. It's a membrane around the exterior of the bone. So it would be located on this surface right here all the way around. Uh, the exterior portion of the bone. And this is that membrane known as the periosteum. So if you were to peel back that periosteum, as this is kind of trying to represent, you got to imagine this gray pit being peeled back down, you'll see all these little lines and uh, kind of pokey bits. And these are known as the sharpies or the perforating fibers, uh, which adhere between the periosteum itself and the proper bone or the cortical bone in this case. Another membrane that you need to have uh, a little bit of an idea about is the endoosteum. Hold on, pointer, there it is, endoosteum. So endo, think of it's on the inside. So this would be on this interior portion of the bone right here. In this case, uh, this is showing what we'll learn to soon be the medullary cavity, right? So if you were looking at the actual photos of bone, you'd be definitely seeing it in these areas here, just kind of lining those internal components. And, and again, that's a different type of membrane. Next up, we're looking at uh, the compact bone more specifically. So the compact bone itself, remember, is this kind of outside part, remember, the cortical bone. It's actually very thick and dense. And if you were to look at it, uh, so here would be a cross section from here, for example, all right, down here and kind of just made a little bit bigger. This here, this is the compact bone. And the compact bone houses uh, these teeny tiny little structures called osteons. So the osteons here are represented by these little circles that have kind of dots in, in the middle. And we'll look a little bit more closely at that in another lecture, right, the subsequent lecture. Okay, the spongy bone. Uh, in contrast, is shown here. So there's that trabecular bone, right? And it looks a little bit more uh, like honeycomb. It's very open. You can almost see the like air cavities and dried bone. So that's the spongy bone. And the individual kind of uh, components of that matrix here, these are known as the trabeculae. Okay, and that trabeculae is actually a bit of a scaffolding for uh, the location of red marrow, right? So uh, the some of the hematopoietic component of the body is uh, located there. 
Next up is the medullary cavity. In the medullary cavity, think of med middle, because it's that middle kind of open space of these bones here, all right? Uh, and the medullary cav cavity is where we have uh, the yellow marrow. So the yellow marrow is uh, ultra-rich, super thick, uh, fatty, adipose substance, okay? Uh, it's, it's very rare that you can actually uh, derive any energy for, say, maybe running or uh, any kind of physical exertion in your everyday activities. Uh, it is possible, but it's used for other things, which we'll look at a little bit later on. And then finally, a final component that you'll need to know of these macrostructures are the blood vessels, right? And they enter through a uh, nutrient foramen. And remember, bone is a type of connective tissue that has vascularization, meaning it has the presence of blood vessels. So uh, arteries uh, bringing fresh oxygenated blood and then uh, veins that are taking away uh, all of the waste and the deoxygenated blood uh, from these osteons, as we'll see a little bit later. So these are some of the macrostructures of bone. On the surface of these uh, bones are also some other regions that I need you to know about. So some of them being uh, particularly the articulating surfaces. And anytime you see the word articulating, just know that it's, it's where the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. So these parts of the bones are going to touch other bones or other structures, primarily bones though, really, um, in order to create joints. So they, the act of actually bone touching bone in its proper orientation, this is the articulation, right? And these are the surfaces upon which that occurs. Uh, let's see here. Now, there are these three kind of uh, larger regions of the long bones. So the epiphyses, right, so uh, are going to be on the external, farthest reaching, right? They're the furthest away, okay? The metaphysis, uh, these are going to be these more middle regions of the bone, right? So these aren't quite as far away. And the metaphysis are so named because they are relative to the diaphysis, and this is the shaft of the long bones. This is kind of the more central location, that long extended part. So diaphysis, metaphyses, and then of course, finally, the epiphyses, okay? Those are the regions of the long bone. Markings of bone tell us a little bit more about their limits, their articulations, uh, and help us describe more specific features on each one of the individual bones. So first up is a condyle, and a condyle is a, a rounded uh, projection of bone, and it specifically articulates with another bit of bone, so it has that nice little rounded surface on this outcropping. In contrast, a crest uh, shown here. So this is the iliac crest. Uh, all right. So this is a very narrow outcropping, like a ridge of bone, and, and it's usually very prominent. So it really sticks out there. An epicondyle, as the name implies, is, is sort of condylar. So here's uh, a set of condyles, and this is, this is representing the bottom part of the femur, right? So it's articulating with tibia. Uh, so an epicondyle is going to be just uh, a smaller uh, raised area, and it's going to be just above a condyle, right? So just above and outside, so epi, as the name implies. Oh, there you go, epi. So next is the facets. And so a facet is a, another type of an articulated, or a tar articular surface. And it's usually very, very flat and uh, very smooth, right? And um, let's see here. So next we have the fissure. So a fissure, for example, would be... So next up is going to be a fissure. So fair, a fissure is, is, is seen right here. Uh, this is an inferior orbital fissure, right? Because of the orbitals of the eyes. And it's kind of like a slit. If this if it was extending all the way out, right? You can see how it's just a nice little slit in the back of the orbits for the eyes. A foramen is basically just a, it's a hole. It's a hole. Here's some mental foramen, right? Remember, mental, we're talking about the chin. Uh, 
let's see here. Uh, here's a few more. Uh, these, so these are the infraorbital foramen. Also in the back of the head, in the occipital bone, there's foramen magnum, gigantic foramen. It's just a hole all the way through, straight through the bone. A fossa is a depression in bone that uh, is reciprocal to a um, articulating surface. So here we have a condyle, and it articulates right here on uh, this portion of the skull. So that depression occurs, or it's like a kind of a basin, like it's really flat and really smooth, and that's what we would call a fossa. So just think of, you know, a bone is articulating with it. A groove in bone uh, refers to kind of this ridged area. It's often described as a, a furrow in, in bone, but it would be uh, essentially kind of this raised line, and it's very deep on this uh, interior portion, and technically the interior part, that's, that's the groove proper, right? So it has a raised surface around it, but the groove proper is the uh, lower part of that surface. A head uh, is, is a terminal portion of bone, but really one of the things that is most useful for people to uh, think about is that it has a neck to it. So it kind of has this long neck, so you would think of that terminal surface of being the head because it has that longer bony part that we call the neck. And speaking of head and neck, uh, here's another representation of a head and neck portion of a different bone. But in this case, I'm actually showing you this because I want to talk about the line. So uh, here's a line that goes right through here. And this line in particular, is similar to a crest, even here in these uh, old images. Uh, these images are almost 100 years old. Uh, it's, it's referred to as a crest, but it's actually not quite as high as a crest. You know, it's not quite as prominent as the iliac crest here, right? So that's, that's a true crest. Uh, so, and next up here we have a meatus. You know, it looks like meatus, but generally it's pronounced meatus. And what that means is there's a, actually a tube or a canal, if you will, all the way through bones. So there's, there's actually a true passageway here. Uh, and this is for the auditory meatus of the skull. A notch is also a depression. It's really more of a dent. Uh, here is lesser sciatic notch and the greater sciatic notch. Uh, so as you can see, it almost looks like somebody took a hammer and just indented this part of the bone, right? And so that indentation is referred to as a notch. A process refers to any part of a bone that kind of just is sticks out prominently, right? So it's uh, almost like this three-dimensional peninsula of bone. Next is the ramus. And the ramus itself is, is supposed to be kind of like an arm-like projection of bone. Right here, like an arm just kind of reaching up and trying to articulate with another surface. So that's a ramus or a ramus. A sinus is any kind of a, like a, basically a hole or an open area inside of bone. Here's actually a large one for the sphenoidal sinus, right? So these are all within the skull. Often these sinuses are uh, either filled with this, uh, like air, for example, or sometimes also mucosa. A spine uh, is referred to here. So this is it, more of a sharp ridge, really, and it's very slender. Uh, in, in this case, as well as many others, it works as part of a projection, actually. And it's the part of the projection that's, that's pointing out, so it's kind of sharp and pointing out. So that would be spine. So a trochanter, uh, shown really in the femur, 
uh, is this kind of blunt and lumpy. It's usually very, it, well, in this case, obviously, it's not a lot of cases, very large. And um, it's, you know, known primarily for how irregularly shaped it is. A tubercle, as shown here, uh, it's it's a much smaller uh, structure, and it's it's usually a little rounded, and uh, it just sticks out just enough so that technically it is a proper process. So right here, and it's rounded on top, teeny tiny. This is a tubercle, and finally a tuberosity. So a tuberosity is a much larger region of bone, and uh, typically, as shown here in the tuberosity uh, of the issue, it's, it's when individuals are very young, it's a very rigid, uh, lots of attachment for those, um, the, for the pubic symphysis, and then as it ages, it kind of flattens out a little bit. But it's that large area that's very rigid that we refer to as the tuberosity of bone. So in review, we took a look today at the gross anatomy of bone and talked about the general morphology of it. We looked at compact bone, spongy bone, what those particular structures are composed of and how to tell them apart. We looked at some of the structures that are found in bone, the membranes on the outside. We looked a little more closely at trabecular bone and compact bone. We also uh, looked at structures such as the medullary cavity, where the yellow marrow is housed, as well as the red marrow, and uh, the input of the blood vessel into the major long bone. We also discussed the articulating surfaces, what an epiphysis, metaphysis, and diaphysis is. We also looked at the markings of bone, the condyle crest, epicondyle facet, fissure, foramen, fossa, groove, headline, meatus, notch, process, ramus, sinus, spine, trochanter, tubercle, and tuberosity. There is one thing I forgot to mention, though, and I just noticed it, so we're going to kind of tag that puppy on at the very end. Uh, right here, during when we're looking at the articulating surfaces, one of the, the last, actually... Thing to mention is the epiphyseal line. So the epiphyseal line is going to be pretty important coming up. So right here you can kind of see where that bone is a little bit more uh, kind of stitched together if you will. Let's see if I can get it really big. Maybe. That'd be great. Oh yeah, look at that. That's so great. Okay. So you can kind of see this area here. This is the epiphyseal line. And that's going to be key when we start talking about the epiphyseal plates because that's a structure that allows us to uh, grow our long bones long, basically. Uh, all right, so that concludes everything we need to talk about for this particular lecture.